remember live uh, as in alive right now still <laughs> live I remember last as week as of the recording as of the recording uh, this is Ho Ho Hong Kong welcome to a new episode uh, because last week the episode that we dropped last week which is to a palm we also live, were doing live. it live yeah. with live stream uh, shop stream god damn it it's a live stream <laughs> on shop stream yeah, exactly. thank you so much uh, guys for having us on shop stream they, were, they have been amazing to us we also did a li- uh, like a live stand up show with them yeah. it was really fun so if you're listening right now uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in shop stream they're launching and they have they've been approaching pretty much every creative person in in hong kong yeah and they're doing great stuff so check them out you can just download the app yeah so if I they think have it's called pro- shop stream 360 there you go shop stream 360 and if you have downloaded the app you can also follow mohammed at the other mohammed yes and follow me at funny vivek and that's on instagram both of us yeah uh, what happened to the m is it gone now uh, so i just gave up <laughs> I'm like, you know what? It's yeah. too complicated. Yeah, yeah. People are following a funny Vivek N for Nancy. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> but I, just, I was like, whatever, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, it has been uh, now. By now, I think the holiday. Uh, it's it's kind kind of interesting because uh, the holiday in mainland China is one to seven. Yeah. October. That's like a whole week, and yeah, people yeah, like yeah. plan to like travel and do stuff. Yeah. But here is like a rip off. It's one day. Yeah, one day. That's all you get. Exactly. I mean, well, in Hong Kong, you know, that's this is we like, see. This is the perks when actually we become, you know, yeah, China, right. Hong Kong province. <laughs> then we get the full week. <laughs> Every year, October, I'm like, oh, this is it's it. so she worth lied. it. <laughs> <She lied. laughs> oh man, we'll see. Hopefully next year, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because my birthday is on the third of October. Oh, that's so why for, you want the holiday. I was living in mainland yeah. for like seven or eight years. Never celebrated it there. Yeah, because it's the long, it's the golden week. So yeah. people, either people are every one of my friends is traveling or I am traveling. Yeah. So I don't think I ever celebrated it. In well, like, I mean, luckily this year, third of October is a Sunday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so now you've disclosed that we pre-recorded this episode before third of well, October. Well, no, no, I had a great birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was amazing, <laughs> and um, you did I'm that still thing. alive. Yeah, you did that thing on that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did and the thing on the day. Of, <laughs> people gave you that stuff, <laughs> and we went to that place. Yeah, and the weather was something. Yeah, yeah it was it was <laughs> weatherful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're actually recording in uh, 1995, yeah. hoping that this episode will get through. Yeah. So if you're listening to 2021, congrats, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. Uh, we're still here. Uh, speaking of who else is here, we have an amazing guest today, Noral Pamuk. Uh, did I say that correctly? You did say that correctly. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Yes. Um, uh, Narelle is the founder of Saikong Stray Friends, right? And uh, I've been kind of like uh, doing some research in a very non-creepy way, just trying to look you up. <laughs> and uh, I, the, one of the first things that I saw was that SMP interview from earlier this year, uh, when it seemed like in the high, I think we were in one of these lockdown waves, and things were pretty bad for for your uh, organization. So let's start with that. Uh, what, what, what was going on back then? I think the interview was in April. Yes, it was. And we were facing very hard times. It was a time where there was no money generating towards our charity. And we had the most beautiful dog shelter out mm. at Sai Kung, which originated with about 40 dogs, 80 dogs. Mm. I capped it at 100 dogs. Oh, wow. Definitely capped it at 110. But yeah. now we're at a, <laughs> we are now at 150. Oh. So, you know, our expenses are dr- dramatically increased. Yeah. Mm. And the only way we can function is by donations mm-hmm. from the public and support. But it got so bad, I didn't really know where to turn. And I thought the only thing to do was to come public make mm. everybody aware I can't continue, I can't do this alone. Wow, for mm. a second when you said come public, I went, you mean like IPO? You went on the stock market? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish we were at that stage. Yeah. I really <laughs> wish we had some means of being on the stock yeah, market. Yeah, because you know like one of the most famous uh, cryptocurrencies is Dogecoin. And mm-hmm. Dogecoin literally has a dog, like a Shiba dog logo in it. So you can create your own cryptocurrency. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, real quick, how do people donate? Where, where do they go? Well, we have a very active Facebook, which yeah. is Saikung Stray Friends Foundation. Saikung Stray Friends Foundation. Mm-hmm. Everybody and who's listening right now, press the pause button. <laughs> yeah. Saikung Stray Friends Foundation on Also, Facebook. the website is going to be in the description as well yeah. yes, of the episode. And that's saikungstrayfriends.com. Mm. Um, and on there, we have all the details how they can donate, pay me, PayPal or direct to our HSBC Mm. Um, and it's a very easy procedure and we hope people will visit that now we've mentioned it. Mm. But we have had the most amazing 
response from the people, mm. but not just Hong Kong, it went abroad. And the whole article in South China Morning Post mm. really did go viral. Wow. Yeah, so, because I remember actually yeah. this is one of the first time we have a common friend as well. But one of the first things that I learned about you from a long time ago was that article. I think this is the first time I was mm. like I knew about the name of the business mm. uh, or the charity rather. And um it did like it get, did get sent to me by a lot of people because I have a dog, so they thought like, oh, you know, you might be interested in this, and uh, so that was in April. Now we're in October. How how have things been since then? Well, we have still been increasing the numbers of dogs coming in, mm. and I have been doing a big project on the Hong Kong. China border mm. that I was asked could I come up and help it was out of control there's many many fish farms up there and different sites you know like site A B C mm. D and all these local people up there have dogs right to protect their fish farms mm. but they don't dissect them so mm. they continue to breed and breed and breed and they really don't feed them properly mm. nor do they give them fresh water they just have to drink the salt water really? out of the fish farm Wow. It's very sad. Yeah. And when I went up there, I was just really, really shocked. And it took me over that, okay, I can't do anything in half measures. I have to do it with my heart and mm -hmm. go from beginning to end. So then I just started the first stage, which was start A. And apart from just dissecting the dogs and bringing them to Hong Kong, I get them vaccinated. I get them medical checked. And then I was even having to teach them how to drink water when I took them back wow. to the kennel. They had no desire to drink normal water. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I ended up talking to the, the man, the manager on this side A, who turned out in the end to be a nice man. Mm. And he understood he couldn't have that many dogs. He, he couldn't feed them. So he asked we only return... I think at the time was seven. So oh, wow. I inherited straight away about yeah. another eight dogs just from his site. Right. Wow. And then that's how it continued. Every site the next I'd go to, they'd say, take them away. We don't want them. Or if they're a black dog or they're a chocolate colored dog, yeah. mm. definitely didn't want them. Don't Wh return Why is that? Them. I don't know. It seems to be some kind of superstition. I really don't know. Are you familiar with that? Because you're I, from here. I mean, me being brown, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand. I don't. I still don't know why. <laughs> I'm like born in the year of the dog. Maybe that's also something related. I but, but I, I think maybe it's also like a luck factor, like black color. Maybe just you know feels like bad luck, like a black cat. Bad kind luck, of deal. yeah, maybe. It could be that as well. And maybe just you know, it's just happier to see maybe a lighter colored dog to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what it is. I mean, personally, I mean, if I had a if I had a pet. I'd like it to be really dark to the point I play hide and seek. <laughs> and I lose every time. And people can't tell you both apart. <laughs> exactly. So either the hair or the color. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When I'm lying on the floor, like, Viv, go up and do a show. I'm like, that's <laughs> yeah. my dog. I, yeah. <laughs> He's funnier than you. Yeah, oh, exactly. But I will say that the black color dogs, I find from experience, are the most intelligent. Yeah. They are so mm. well behaved. And I will say all these dogs that I have brought down from the China border, they are the most Loving dogs, I think because they've never been spoiled yeah. or had had a lot of attention, mm. but they are just the most happiest dogs. So and they're even, super grateful, right? Yeah, sure. and that's the word. And people who come to the shelter are really surprised and, you know, they just adjust so well. And I've actually just taken one home now because I've got it on some heartworm treatment mm. and not a bark in the house or nothing naughty and and you know you're thinking aren't you going to do something naughty right soon? right yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it seems like stop a lot being of, so boring yeah, yeah. Stop eat the couch or something stop being so good yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like a lot of like dog owners now who have like dogs who are not really uh, uh listening and very obedient they got to send them over to your your <laughs> place and get them fixed like boot camp them yeah. <laughs> uh, i mean one thing you can actually do for everyone's listening right now again like the reason i'm telling you to go to cycling straight friends foundation on facebook is not just to donate but actually go check out the photos like i think what you've done really well is that uh, uh, showcasing all little dogs and the photos and kind of having mm. those pictures where they're looking in the camera with uh, a smile yeah yeah it's like those that. ads yeah right <laughs> it melts your heart you're like man oh you smile better than my girlfriend what's going on <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. i think i think the whole facility there i never intended that it would become sort of what it is today we don't just have like a place for holding dogs that we rescue or mm. dogs that we find it has become what I call a lifestyle park for dogs mm. because the adult dogs, as we all know, 
are not rushed with adoptions. People yeah. always want puppies, puppies, yeah. and, and they go very quickly. But I have to make it a lovely place for these dogs to live out their life because yeah. I am a no-kill facility. Right. Yeah. And I want them to live a beautiful life just as if they were adopted. You already have a home. Yes. Yeah. And they're also happy because we have freedom. We have Every dog in that shelter gets a walk every day. Mm. We do have volunteers that are permanent, but please listen, everybody. We need more permanent volunteers, mm. people to commit just to one day a week or half a day a week because I really do need more help now with the higher volumes mm. of dogs. And so apart from it being a, a lifestyle future park for the dogs that have no adoption potential – we also have what we call a learning education program called Hands On. And this has just taken off where I never expected it to be so sought after. Yeah. So all the schools come there, the students, university students, corporate companies, you know, they do their responsibility days by coming out. Mm. And it's just been amazing because it's teaching people how to be responsible mm. and even the word dissexing i will tell you not mm. many people know the word dissexing mm. or spray or neuter mm. nobody thinks a boy dog should be dissexed right. you know but it takes two to tango of so course. we've got to do both yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so you know apart from you know the shelter and the learning center it it, it's also like a rehabilitation centre. Like I have just done some really, really severe rescues. Mm. One last Sunday from a beach site where we had to arrange a speedboat to pick up the dog mm. and come back, two ear canals removed, horrible, oh, gory wow. things. But then somebody has to really look after them. So it's mm. like we are also a rehabilitation centre and also a clinic, a 24-hour clinic. Right, so, yeah. so you speak. have resident vets as well. No, we don't. But this is this is what my next appeal, my next goal is because mm. we need to have our own veterinary clinic. Absolutely. If you have that many dogs living yes. pretty much permanently there. And all we do is make vet clinics quite substantially. <laughs> yeah. Not wealthy, but you right, know, yeah, more we, yeah, we, yeah. we contribute a lot to their yeah, income. Of course, yeah. <laughs> and the, if we had our own clinic, that means that we could be doing more because mm. – we are still having to make appointments. Mm. When the vet becomes busy, mm. we can't get in. And this is what happens. We've you know, got another clinic that we go to now in Sai Kung. They're so busy, we can hardly you know, mm. get yeah. in immediately. We have another one that we go to in Happy Valley, mm. and that's a long drive from Sai Kung. Yeah. yeah, with a that's sick like dog. That's like two ends of the, 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 spec- right. yeah, the whole mm. map. Wow. But I know the solution for us is going forward, we need to have somebody, whether you talk this stock exchange, I'm yeah. sure <laughs> it would be a wonderful way to go yeah. to open up stray friends clinics. Mm. Yeah. But that would enable us to buy all our medication at wholesale, not mm. retail prices. Right. And we could do more helping of extensive yeah. Yeah, procedures. But I really think where the whole system is let down is because – People don't sex their dogs. The mm. work I do and Quack. other volunteers and other NGOs will never stop until yeah. this problem is really hit on the head by free, F-R-E-E, mm. the sexing clinics. Mm. I wish, I really wish the government would introduce these free clinics because local people mm. cannot afford to get their dogs desexed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And... It's, it's very expensive. I've had to do it here and it was not cheap. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, it doesn't uh, no, For my dog, by the way, not for me. <laughs> not for you. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. That's free. <laughs> yeah, that, that one, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That for people, my, yeah. for me especially, they're like, we will give you money <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you don't make kids yeah. like you. <laughs> Your method of desexing yourself is introducing yourself. It's exactly. Like, hey, there you go. <laughs> desex is my little name too. The local people cannot afford it. Yeah. Right. And therefore, it doesn't become a priority, right? Right. So the dog will go on breeding and breeding and every female having eight puppies and out of those eight puppies there could be four females and it just goes and goes on. Right. Yeah. But we have to stop the breeding and if the government having all these centres, AFCD centres, could open up a clinic, they've got the facilities. They have the vans, they have the staff. Mm. You know, instead of just calling for an animal to be disposed. Yeah. You know, could you call and have a pickup 
to the sexy yeah. animal. Yeah. It makes more sense because so much of this animal life is being disposed of mm. and nobody thinks what happens, but they do, I believe, end up in landfill, which is not really the oh, way we yeah. want it to be. <laughs> yeah. And I do think these beautiful animals don't choose to be born. They're born because we've let them down. Yeah. yeah. And I believe there must be free to sex in clinics and Hong Kong could catch up with some of the other advanced people in animal welfare because I've always been quite proud of Hong Kong that we are so ahead of everything. Mm. We can move staff ferries. We don't have to, mm. you know, go through years of things. Hong Kong gets things done and I just so much want to see us go ahead in the animal welfare. New cruelty laws need to be introduced. You have no idea what I do see from day to day. Mm. Yeah. You know, people don't know how to look after an animal. An animal I took last week, I heard a little little cry when I went somewhere, and I'm mm. not saying where. And I, I said, what's in there? What's in there? Mm. And, a, a, and a puppy that was given as a gift. Yeah. Mm. A little puppy, but then it had grown bigger and it was still in the same cage when it came as a little wow. puppy. Yeah. No water, couldn't see out. Was that in a shop without it being no, too specific? No, not in a was shop. This was somebody just had it at their, their business place. Oh, wow. Wow. And the person looked at me when I said, mm. that is no good, no good. I yeah. try to talk in my broken Chinese. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, they said, oh, we walk it of a morning and a night. But I thought, the dog's living in this darkness of this small cage. Yeah. Nowhere. So anyway, luckily, the dog was surrendered to me mm. yesterday. And today it's in a nice home, getting yeah. walked and treated properly. Mm. But it's just so sad. It's just so, so sad, you know. That, yeah. um, but what are the prerequisites of anybody? Like, I'm sure the idea of, you know, having a dog at part of the family or in the house is a great thing on paper. For a lot of people, they don't realize the responsibility. I mean, like, if you look around my space over here, I have plants, right? Initially, it's like, ah, plants, you know, water, no big deal. Mm. After a while, you're like, wait a second, what? I got to do this. I got to do that. <laughs> yeah. There's this. Oh, you got to. And then you learn as you go. But also, you, it's a commitment. So a lot of people I, I, I know as well, you know, initially, it's a fun thing for the first two, three months. By the fourth month, they're like, man, this is, this is a nuisance now. I, mm. you know, I don't have time for this. I'm too tired for this. Is there anything that you would tell people, first of all, desexing is one thing that if you have a dog, that's part of your responsibility as well, right? What are the other things for someone who's considering or, you know, just thinks that it's a great idea? Are there any few pointers that you have to tell people that this is something you have to think about? Well, we have a, a process of a questionnaire. So if anybody approaches us, about adopting a dog, straight away we ask them to complete the questionnaire and mm. then we can get an idea of their living conditions, if they're busy. Like if somebody's going to work at 7.30 in the morning and not mm. coming home to say 8 o'clock at night, why am I going to be wanting to put a dog into that yeah. lonely situation? Yeah, right. Dogs need company. And if you were to put a young puppy and leave it alone in an apartment like this size, yeah. you wouldn't have a corner left on your... <laughs> Your cabinets yeah, here or your shoes yeah. will be yeah. chewed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they need entertainment as such, you know, not yeah. just toys. They need company. So we go through the questionnaires. We do invite the people to come. Hmm. But we also do ask people to come one or two times if they're looking for an adult dog to build a relationship with the dog Yeah, to see if the dog's sort of going to them or they're liking the dog. It's not just walk in pick a dog and take it out. It doesn't work like that with yeah. us. We are really like an adoption process where mm. we, we want to not just check you out, but we also ask for photos of your home mm. and not to be invasive, but just to look at the of safe, course, safety yeah, aspects of your home. Because it's still a responsibility of, of yours yeah. of where the dog is going next, yeah, right? Yeah, we don't want to see a dog on a roof jump on a chair and then he comes tumbling down. <laughs> Actually, <Yeah. laughs> we'll get to that in a second because I've had a quite a dramatic story with my dog recently. But before I get into that, on the same topic, I have had a lot of friends and big part of the reason I wanted you on as well is because like, I believe in the same cause, right? I have a dog. I want everyone to adopt dogs. Obviously, don't buy a dog ever. That is just cruel. Uh, but... I have had many friends in Hong Kong who I convinced to, to adopt dogs. And most of the time, without mentioning any names, most of the times when they go to shelters or private, um, private places that have dogs for adoption, the, the, the process is very stringent. And I understand that it, for, for a lot of it, is, it makes sense that you want to make sure that the dog is going to a good home. But I've had many friends get rejected and they're very frustrated because they're like, I, I, I think 
I did all the right things. Like I live alone. I, you know, I'm someone is always at home. I have a nice home, whatever. And it seemed a bit more arbitrary. And people maybe like to to play the power game when you just want to say no to people. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. It's not a power game. It's a very sensible, mm. you know, future that we're talking about. Mm. We have to not just think of today or that person going to be happy, as you say, for mm. a few months and then they find they can't cope. You know, we, we go through the process with them. Mm. You know, we, we talk about it. We make them aware. I mm. also tell them now, if you're thinking of leaving Hong Kong, you have to factor in if mm. you can afford the relocation costs. This mm. is the big issue at the moment. Um, and I don't want any of the dogs coming back in, of in a couple of months. or Because once they get a dog off us... We are the Sai Kung family. Mm. When you take a dog, we have a WhatsApp. Mm. We go through it with you the mm. first few nights, the first weeks. Even I've got another message today for a dog which was adopted eight years ago. We're right. still here to be that support to you because mm. I don't want any of our stray friends ending up abandoned or yeah. right. bad things to happen. We are family to the end. But we need everybody who joins our family to have good, respectable ownership, you know, bonds for our dogs. Mm. And it's not about I don't like your house, your house is too small Mm. because, you know, a lot of the time it depends how big your heart is. Mm. Yeah, right, um, yeah. I mean, uh, this is – I haven't gone through the adoption process in Hong Kong. I've done it actually in Shanghai. Uh, This is where my dog is from. And so I'm, I can't speak from my own experience, but I have had a lot of people who came back to me frustrated with the adoption process here. Mm-hmm. And while I understand what you're saying is that you don't want the dogs to come back, my, 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 I can see that these people are actually, if I am to give my dog for some reason to them, I would actually be comfortable with it. And I'm not saying that because they're my friends and I'm biased. I'm just curious, like, why do people have that complaint, Right. I don't know who mm. your people, who your friends are, but mm. there'll always be someone with a complaint out there. Right, yeah, yeah. That yeah. well, yeah, makes <laughs> yeah. sense. No matter what. Yeah. You know, if something doesn't please somebody, well, they're not going to be that As happy. comedians, that happens to us all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought I did a great time. They didn't laugh. They complained. I don't get it. I was having a good time on stage. What's going on? Well, I, I couldn't do your job. I can tell you that. I couldn't <laughs> do your job. No, if I had to take 158 like people in an audience and make sure they're fed, not happening. I could entertain them for <laughs> seven minutes, but after that, we're out. <laughs> Well, I can tell you it's a lot of feed for 150 dogs. Our oh, wow. order yeah. our order this week is close to $28,000 for wow. the month. Oof. You Oof. know. And that's not including rent, that's not including No, yeah. no. Like people don't understand, you know, it is very very difficult, you know. That's the dry food, but mm. then on top of that we have the chicken. We cook 32 bags of chicken every day. <laughs> yeah. And can I come live in your <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> well, that's what I say. Every dog that walks through our gates mm. is the lucky dog. Yeah. Right. And once they're in the gates, they're in and we will look after them. Um, but we do give every dog a cooked meal, not only in the shelter, but we also have a Meals on Wheels service right. that I actually just started many, many years ago when I first moved to Sai Kung, mm. but it's now continued on. So it goes out 365 days a year with the cooked chicken and the dry food and every dog on our Meals on Wheels will get a, a, a lovely cooked so meal. So these dogs are stray? Yes, yeah. or s- sort of locally owned, yeah. but nobody will take right, responsibility. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So once they're on our program, they're also under our, our management. We yeah. monitor their health and, and we'll always take care of them. Um, so this is, all, this is all made possible. I mean, because I'm looking at your website with all the different donation plans. Obviously, there's a one-off donations for some people I just want to give. That's fine. you know. Yeah. And you've got some of the, as I can see over here, you got the $2,500 a month full dog sponsorship. And that, I think, was the ultimate one that contributes as in you have another dog coming in. This one's taken care of. Thank you so much. That's You're right. making sure this happens, mm. right? Well, that 2500 is what it cost me. Yeah. What, right. What it cost yeah. 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 For, for that dog to have shelter, to have the washing done every day in its room, its bedding, you know, the food. Do you wash them every day? Every day. We, ha- we have four <laughs> washing machines and four dryers. I gotta, I gotta wait, wait. You put the dog in the washing machine? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> we got a car wash, man. We got a car wash. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> well, I mean, mm. we, anything would be defined as a machine. <laughs> yeah. With the yeah. way she's working, I think that we can I, that I am the machine. You are the machine. They, exactly. they call yeah. me the machine. Exactly. Yeah. I am the machine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the machine is here. The dog's like, oh, it's on. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, so you, the dog's actually. 
actually need washing every day because no, I wash mine like no, twice no, a no. month. No, 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 yeah. no, they don't. They don't okay. at all. But the the bedding does need. Oh right, washing, okay. You yeah, know, because. I like to pride ourselves of having a very high standard shelter. So yeah. I don't like people walking in or there's, you know. Yeah, it smells yeah. or, yeah, 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 yeah. the dogs so look, yeah. I like to call it like the peninsula for dogs. Oh, <laughs> with high tea and everything. <laughs> Again, can, yeah, I please, high tea, high can I please comes. move into your yeah. shelter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will leave my dog at home. I will live with you. This is the first time I think everyone's listening is like, I want to be reincarnated into a dog yeah. in life. <laughs> well, so like, many people will say, oh, you have a shelter. Oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't go to a shelter and see all those dogs looking at me and mm. crying. I said, but you've never been to our shelter. Mm. Mm. That's not our shelter. Yeah. Ours is a happy place. Yeah. Right. And the dogs will be jumping up. They'll give you a cuddle or a kiss. You know, mm. they've got nothing to be unhappy about. Mm. But let me get into this because you talk about the happiness uh, point in your shelter. And what I've noticed, I was reading before about the therapy that even having pets and, you know, being amongst pets can do for you. So, like, is there something that you have where people actually come to your place because they just want to be among? pets or just want to help out and just you know kind of yeah, therapeutic. Well, I call that a friendship volunteer okay, and okay, it's okay. very very important and for some dogs that are really going to be spending their entire life in the shelter nothing yeah. better than to know that somebody's coming to see them whether it be once a week yeah. or even you know once once a few weeks but the dog will remember them because yes. they've been been nice to them they'll take them out for a walk and I can't tell you how excited the dog will get when they see that Friendship yes. person yeah. come to them, you know. Yeah, and I try to try to promote that as much as I can because that is important. Because they all want to feel loved, you know. Of I mean, course, we are only a few people working at the shelter. Mm. We need more people because it's it's hard to love a hundred and fifty continually every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, a cuddle, hours, yeah. A sit down and a cuddle with them is lovely. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And my my dog remembers people she has met like maybe six months ago once. Like we would just run into each other in the street and like six months later, she would try to run across the street to say hi. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And she goes, I'm like, oh yeah, that's my friend from a long time ago. Mm. They always remember, the per especially as you said, when they're nice to them, when they spend some time with them. Mm. She gets so excited when she sees them again and I'm always mm. thinking it's wonderful that they have that memory because a lot of the times I forgot the person. <laughs> but Definitely forgot the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. And they remember the dog's name. Yeah. It's also the other way around where a lot of people, at least in my neighborhood now, remember the dog's name and not mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and there's a little kid, actually in my old neighborhood in TST, the little kid who always points at me and say Yara, which is my, na my dog's name. Mm. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 I, she's Yara, I'm not. He's like, Yara, I'm like, okay, no Okay, I'll, I'll respond to whatever it takes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let me come back to this, though. I'm curious because like, you, I noticed that you talked about the happiness and how your shelter is different from the other side. You're trying, no, not trying to portray a sad, sympathetic, oh, please help us out kind of image, but it's more like like you say, friends. You're using the word friends. You know, you're not trying to say that the poor ones adopt them, plus help them out. I've noticed that the wording's always been more positive. Has there been a moment when you just kind of had a, that shift in your life as well where you were like, okay, I'm I going to change my life a bit. I need to be more positive or find happiness and maybe a dog was the way that helped you find that click? Well, I think a dog is always a positive thing for people because it's a companion, it's a friend and a loyal friend. And I believe dogs are much more loyal than people and I really think they have a lot to teach us. Dogs mm. are much more loyal than most mobile phones. Mobile phones <laughs> will just give up on you after a few years. You know? I put my mobile phone on my dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like it's like the, first, <laughs> the two things I love the most in my life. Dog and the mobile. <laughs> dog and mobile phone. Like it's like one of these games, like if you ever like get a, on an island by yourself, what would you pick? It's literally my dog, my mobile phone, and like a book, and then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm very curious, because coming back to this whole thing, like what caused you to even decide that, hey, I want to do something, I need to start this way. at what point in your life did you just say okay I got to change from where I'm at and go somewhere else and this is the beginning of a new chapter that's a great well, question because be your background <laughs> is not even like working with dogs or veterinary yeah. or something you like that you were in a doggy dog world that's the closest <laughs> I can connect with you <laughs> nice hey. no I didn't have any intention to change my lifestyle I was very happy with it I had a successful property business um, on Hong Kong Island and was always going out in our nice Mercedes cars, our fleet of cars we had and showing people properties and going through lovely upmarket homes. Mm. And it was a lovely lifestyle. I had money in the bank, you know, I had jewellery, I had nice clothes every day 
And I had fancy that. dinners, well, okay. all of and that. Holidays. I mean, to be yeah. addressed, you got the leopard, <laughs> leopard out. <laughs> I'll, I'll, maybe inspired by 101 and Dalmatians and or something. Yeah. yeah, that's good enough. That's still style. It's made of actual leather, though. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> Art- artificial. <laughs> <laughs> actual artificial leather. That's how I brand it. So there was no intentions until I actually had to move. Our building was sold and pulled down. We were mm. happy in our building. We had oh. a nice apartment at Stanley. But the time come, of course, the rents went, wow, from there sky high. Mm. And so yeah. there was and no w- way. About what, th- what year was that? Oh, I've been 15 years now doing right. this in Sai Kung. So, so uh, 15, 15 years, years ago yeah. is when it happened, Ooh, like yeah. when they tried to pull the building and all of that. Yes. Okay. And so when the that happened, there was no way we were going to pay these high rents of, to mm. live in Stanley. So we went to Sai Kung to look at buying um, a property mm. and it was really – this. I'll just put in a little bit of a funny bit here. Mm. When we got to Sai Kung, my husband said – He'd like to sort of look at Marina Cove because they have pontoons, some yeah, of the yeah. houses, and, mm. and we had a boat that we had at Tai Tam. And he asked me would I make some property viewings to go see Marina Cove yeah. homes. Mm. But I wasn't particularly fond of Marina Cove. And at that time, I didn't really want to leave Stanley. Yeah. yeah. So I was one of these real horrible, horrible. <laughs> 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 We're staying right here yes, at this yes, area. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, he'd keep asking me to make appointments and I wouldn't. So I came home this day and he said, I have an appointment made to look at some property at Sai Kung at Marina Cove. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's my job. <laughs> yeah. He said, you're not the only property agent exactly. in Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, wait, so you're giving someone else my commission? Hold on a second. I know, but he yeah. was so serious. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I went along in the car and we met this agent. Were you like all grumpy? Oh, yes. I had a, <laughs> Man, I had that, a real yeah, twisted like, face. <laughs> my mom hires another comedian to entertain at her exactly. birthday. I'm like, wait, hello. Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, so anyway. We're in the car and we're looking at some properties. But this local Chinese agent, he was the worst driver. <laughs> he was so bad that I, at the end, my nerves, I felt like they were broken. And mm. I asked him just to stop the car. Mm. And I said, would you mind, you tell me where the properties are and yeah. show me. Because I really didn't know the areas of Sai Kung Nen, mm. And I'll drive. Mm. Yeah. And he said, will you? Yeah. He said, I'm so nervous driving. <laughs> I said, oh, I'd Poor love guy, to do yeah. that for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> And save all of our lives. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like living. Let's continue. Yeah. That. Yeah. So it was sort of funny. And from that day forward, mm. we became good friends and I would refer a lot of my clients. Hong, Hong Kong yeah. Island clients to him. And we worked together for quite some time. Oh, wow. So <laughs> something good came out of it, but nice. my husband didn't get Marina <laughs> Coast. <laughs> oh, he did? Oh, oh. Nice. okay. <laughs> wait, wait, he didn't get it because it wasn't the right choice. So you were like, we're not letting you win. No, because this agent did take us to the current home, the home mm. that we've bought. Yeah. And it, it was nice. And my, my two children and my husband liked it. And it was okay. Yeah. And then as we're sort of leaving, um, the agent could call us and say you have to make a decision somebody wants this property you have Mm. to make a decision and i'm saying to my family look don't be pushed it's just agent talk don't be pushed and they said to me well don't you blow it with your negotiating because we really want this house we really like it Mm. so i thought oh okay (laughs) anyway we did buy the house six months later i'm walking along with my dog and this lady stopped me and she said, well, where do you live? And we got talking. Mm. And she said, oh, you pipped me on that house. I really wanted to buy that house. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> and I thought, oh, maybe agents don't tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> you message the guy, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. He's like, I've been trying to help you. I've been telling you that. <laughs> yeah. oh, wow. You thought I'm bluffing. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the lady who you took the house over from, she was in good good spirits. And went, yes, she was. Yeah, there, were, there was no like throwing TP at your house. I was like, oh, I get some toilet paper all over the place. No, but she did buy another house and she has sold it and she's gone now. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, win, win, did win. Did you buy her new house off her as well? Yeah. <laughs> that would have been it, that right? It's like Monopoly, basically. Yeah, yeah exactly. Were you already bankrupt? Yeah. Like, I'm going to take that for very cheap. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. and, and I will say that every time we would go to Sai Kung when we were thinking about moving – and our car would get back to the Stanley roundabout, mm. we'd all say, oh, forget it. Oh. <laughs> and I used to always think there'd never be life after Stanley. Yeah. You know? But I can tell you, 15 years later, I don't know how I 
could see myself coming back to live on Hong Kong Island. Right. Ah. Yeah. Because yeah, I hear that a lot. Once you live out there, you see the cows walking around yeah. and it's barking deer sometimes when you go for walks. You know, yeah. it's, it's just beautiful, the nature of yeah. Sai Kung. And although the traffic is the downside. On that one. Oh, it's on the weekend. I mean, Stanley as well, you know, that, that road going yeah, down there is just as bad. Yeah, yep. sometimes. But life in Sai Kung is wonderful, you know, and to have a house again and a garden yeah. as opposed to living in, in an shoe apartment. Yeah, yeah, or a shoebox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so yeah, I'm trying to, to also like follow the story. So now you bought the house. You're still in the real estate Word. Yes, driving from Sai Kung to Stanley every day. Which so your office was in Stanley yes, still? Yes, Stanley okay. Plaza. Yeah. So what ended up happening, I went to Shenzhen one day to get mm. some dog beds made for my own dog. Yeah. So and the whole time you've had yours, just one dog? No, no, no. I always had five, five <laughs> or six. <so laughs> but that's also <laughs> just because you like dogs. Like No, yeah. because that was my husband had a boat at Tai Tam ah. and there was a dog there and mm. he always said she's such a lovely dog if mm. ever she has puppies we really should have one right yeah. well no sooner he said that she had another litter of puppies <laughs> so he asked me to come on down and have a look so we took the i think it was seven puppies all home and we looked after them mm. and i got them homes and things yeah um and that's sort of how it started it uh, wasn't see, me. It's okay my my husband started all this dog thing really but i get blamed for it <laughs> that's so yeah. funny so yeah basically you're helping out the one dog and then you help them the puppies find homes mm. and that was your first experience yeah. with like the process of getting taking animals in and then well we always did have one we had right. a german shepherd originally in australia mm. and when we came here we flew him with us yeah but when he passed away well that's when the litter came next and we kept ah. we kept three dogs out of that litter yeah so then you're getting back to the story because yes. I'll keep getting lost if we keep <laughs> yeah, jumping that's okay. around. Okay, yeah. mm. <laughs> I was at Shenzhen getting some dog beds made mm. and I gave the shop my address as Sai Kung. Mm. These two women in the shop pricked their ears, jumped over and said, oh, do you live in Sai Kung? And I said, yes. And I said, oh, how long have you been there? I said, oh, I've just moved there now getting some dog beds made. Oh, look. Do you think you could help us? We started a little group trying to help dogs in Sai Kung because they are so bad, they're so poorly, nobody helps the dogs in Sai Kung. But we are due to leave Sai Kung. I'm going to UK, I'm going to Canada. Mm. But we need another name or our little group will not be able to continue. Would you be able to give us your Hong Kong ID and name just to keep the, the group functioning? And I thought... Woo, I don't even know these yeah. ladies yeah, yet. That's they that's want that's my Hong Kong Shenzhen idea. Too. You're not even in <laughs> Hong Kong. Yeah, wow. yeah, hold okay. on a second. I said, look, let's just make an appointment and we'll meet up and we'll talk about it and you can explain to me what you're doing and what you really want from me. Hmm. So I did that. So naturally they were in a, in a little bit of a situation so I said I'd help and they told me what I had to do. And that was sitting on a Saturday or a Sunday in Sai Kung taking puppies and dogs and trying to get them homes. So being and very gullible. And they have gullible, already been doing that. Yes. And right. I'd have some school children on, mm. on come and help and things like that. But being gullible, I didn't sort of ask, where do you go from there? So right. when five o'clock comes, if people hadn't adopted a puppy or a dog, mm. where do they go? What yeah. happens to them? Yeah. So very quickly I got up to another seven dogs in my home. <laughs> And a volunteer who was helping me the same. And, and I realised that, you know, this is just not, not possible to go on like this. Mm. So we did find the shelter that where I am now. And there was this lady there who said we could leave the dogs there and pay her $1,000 a dog. But she wouldn't feed them. Mm. And they'd, they'd never get out of the kennel room. It was putting them into prison. So I would go to Stanley, work all day. My helper here at Sai Kung at the house would cook some food. I'd come home, pick up the food, go back to the shelter, oh my feed God, yeah. the dogs that we had in there, our mm. stray friends, which got to 8,000. And I can tell you our little donation bucket did not raise 8,000 yeah. for me to keep those dogs in there yeah. continually. So then when I took the food to our sort of eight dogs at that time, the whole shelter dogs would be jumping up so hungry yeah. because this woman would only give them a little bit of dry food. Right. Yeah. And it broke my heart. So I f was taking food then every day to all these dogs in the shelter that she was getting paid for. And you still had your full-time job. And I still had, oh my God. I cool. still had my peninsula properties yeah. here on the island. So then I thought, 
being a business person, mm. this is not sustainable. I have to buy the shelter and I have to get rid of that woman. Right. <laughs> wow. So that's where my life become this terrible, stressful, ongoing life. Yeah. <laughs> the journey, the journey as we can say. Yeah. So then that was horrible. She said, yes, the property was for sale. And mm. this is a long story. I don't know whether you'd have enough time. Oh, no, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, then... I'm, I'm really curious because I just... I, I, I'm really intrigued about how you managed to balance both sides. And it was more like your heart was telling you, I, I need to help the dogs out. Yes, but well. like mentally, physically, weren't you like fatigued to the point that at some point you might have broken down where you're just like, I can't balance it. This is exhausting. Well, that's how it is. And it hasn't changed for 15 years. <laughs> and that's why I'm called the machine. You know how it can change? Right. <laughs> By people donating. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You go to <laughs> yeah. Or like permanent volunteers as well. Well, I'm getting off the story again, but you know what you're saying mm. is so true. I mm. am having a little bit of almost mutiny on the ba- bounty at the moment at the mm. shelter. We don't have enough manpower. The few of us that are there are exhausted. You know, it's it's hard. From morning to night, we're not getting out of there till 7, 7.30. Yeah. And the staff, the few helpers that I have, uh, really now not begging, but really asking, we have to have another staff person. Mm. And I don't have the financial capacity to put on another full-time yeah. person. So you need a like full-time volunteer or someone at least, or maybe two half-time volunteers to Yeah, but you don't understand, up. volunteers are volunteers. Yeah, true. Mm. Of course, and the capacity is going to be limited. And to every single day, a dog in that shelter is the same. So yeah. I, I can't totally function on volunteers i Mm. have to have stability Mm. and i have one kennel manager who is amazing she doesn't have a day off Mm. not a day off and she's like so thin now because she's really pushed to her limits and i do sort of pay one person to come and be a support person to two people but Mm. we need an extra one and Mm. i pay those people only like $500 $500 a day to come mm. and help. Mm. But still, if I'm having to pay $1,500 a day, mm. if you work out that at the end of the month, it's still... That's a lot. I, yeah. I need somebody to donate or help, mm. you know, at least fifteen, eighteen thousand a month to help us get an extra person. So if any companies are out there, they can write it off through their business. Anything they give to our charity is a tax deduction. Mm. But, you know, so many people... Wealthy companies out there, I'm sure they could help help us just get one more staff person. Yeah. So let, let's put it this way. Let's put it all in perspective. So if you're saying that you're hoping to raise, let's say, another twenty thousand dollars Hong Kong well, per 20, month, twenty thousand would be wonderful. Yeah. If we can hit something like that, right? So yeah. in other words, like we have listeners, we have people who have friends and companies. So if you're listening right now, what you can do is talk to your company that you're working at. See, you know, maybe they have some budget or the CSR. They want to work on something different. Yeah. And go to the, the Facebook. That's definitely where you want to go. Look at those pictures. Those pictures will get you. <laughs> you know. And I think definitely that's the first step. And manpower as well. I'm just curious. When manpower you say, is something we, we just need so yeah, badly. So when For you say, safety as well. Exactly. So I'm just curious. Like, so manpower, what could somebody, like there might be listeners who are interested or even someone who knows somebody who could actually help out. Maybe someone just dog walking nowadays and says, I want to do more than just but that. But you know when you think of, realistically, people want, may want to help and they'll come along, but unless they want to become permanent, it's just another burden on us. Understood. Right. Because By we the time have you teach to, them and everything. We have yeah. to say to that people, you know, how do you do this? How do you hold the dog leash? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and we don't have enough time. To teach yeah. you yeah. all the basics, so, yeah. Um, we really want people to register as permanent volunteers. Yeah. They could tell me they'll come and every be Monday. be responsible, or, obviously. Yeah. 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 So when you say permanent as in regularly yes. returning, not that you're there 24-7. That's but right. okay, so like let's say someone come every Monday. Well, I do. Day. We have a retired um, corporate man. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he comes Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. But now, very reliable every yes. time on time. So that's every that's morning. Basically, it's, hi, hi, a John. Full-time volunteer. And off he goes. He knows the dogs. He knows the dog names. He mm. knows the, the whole procedure. He is such a support to us. Mm. But if somebody else comes, because we have to for have the other three days, for mm. example, yeah, we have a booking system now because mm. people want to come. Our environment is beautiful, and it's something that people can't get in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. You know. When they come there, it's, it's, it's such an experience for them. Mm. So I had to introduce a booking system because I have to try and make sure I have some manpower there. 
Mm. You know, it's all a matter of safety, you know. And so people get very disappointed if they have to wait one or two weeks to get in. And we do try to give priority to the schools because it's so important Mm. that this education... Yeah. Education, education is the only answer for tomorrow's progress. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I need to have staff. But that's one thing I want to get into because education to myself is important. Like even the world of comedy or like, uh, you know, different racial harmony, stuff like that. It's all about teaching the new generation to have a different mindset, to realize this is not a problem that you just brush away. This is an issue that you're going to face one day yourself as well. So when you say education, uh, could you give us a quick example? I'm, I'm always curious about like how do you talk to the new generation and convince kids that this is something that you want to be, know about? Okay, well, the kids are wonderful because... Not all the kids because some are frightened. They've Mm, never been exposed to animals. So they're the ones that we do try to focus on Mm. to get them over their fears because their parents have obviously never had dogs or they haven't Mm. been around dogs. So, you know, we'll always sort of start them off, you know, touching a little puppy. And when I go to the schools, I'll always take a puppy and then I'll take an adult dog because people still don't understand a puppy grows into a bigger yeah, dog. It's yeah, really, you think it a puppy really is this cute thing. Me. Yeah, yeah. they will always be that way. Yeah, so yeah. when they come, we, we actually show them how to hold the leash, how to walk the dog. We try to explain that they have to have control of the dog. Um, we teach them how to wash a dog and then we get them involved with the feeding, you know, because people sometimes think it's just great to give a dog just a, a, a dish of dry food. Mm. And it is. It's healthy. You know, but it also dogs love to have one good meal a day. Yeah. It's their high point. So I always tell people, would you like to have dry toast every meal? Yeah. <laughs> Try and give your dog something that they're, they're excited about. Yeah. And all these, these are just general things of teaching people. Um, and they do love it. You know, they love it. And, mm. you know, particularly when they take the walk, the dogs on the walks from our, our shelter, it's a lovely walk at the base of the hills and McElhose Trail. But this is something that, you know, is just so important. And, and when the schools come, we have one come regularly as an after-school activity. They bring the children in the bus. Mm. We break them up because I try to also give the children a little bit of um, outdoor activity. Right, yeah. You know, we'll be working on the, the land that adjoins our, our place. You know, we'll be moving things or we'll be carrying things. Or the other day we're, we're cutting sort of some rattan on things off, off a couch. Mm. You know, Hong Kong kids really don't get to do a lot of this outdoor stuff. Yeah. And that's why our whole facility has become sort of so in, in, in demand. And yeah. I can't keep up with the demand. I've got so much further I can go with it, but we really need an injection of planning yeah. for, for where we're going. You uh, know? I have a story for you because you were talking earlier about how advanced Hong Kong is with the animal cruelty stuff. Like people don't really tolerate it here. Um, <laughs> my experience has been is that people are can can get a little overboard with it. Like I'm not sure if you have heard of people just like reporting like something happening to a dog when nothing was really happening. But because Hong Kong is so sensitive about animal cruelty, they take it very seriously, which I think is a good thing. But I have unfortunately fallen like under the category of like nothing was happening and I got like reported and it's such a crazy story because basically I was at somewhere in the new territories in an office and my landlady calls me saying I think your house is on fire <laughs> because the the fire truck is there and uh, I'm like what the hell my dog is in the house right so I'm freaking out go to the house house is not on fire a dog is missing just not in the house um, I try to investigate it turns out Someone, so I have like one of the, I live in one of these short buildings where it's one apartment per floor and you can't really see the apartment except, except from across the street. Like if you're next door or even downstairs on the street, you cannot see the window. So apparently someone across the street saw that the dog was alone in the house and the, the window was open and the window's always open because it's like just a little bit for air. I've had this dog for three years. We came together from Shanghai. She's super smart and she's terrified of windows. Like she doesn't even get close to the window. Apparently, someone saw it there, and because Hong Kong takes it so seriously, they called the SPCA, that called the firefighters, and there was a massive rescue operation. Not just that they took it to the fourth floor, like like really big, like <laughs> eight or nine people on the street. They diverted the traffic uh, from the entire block. They blockaded the whole area. Apparently, it costed them about fifty thousand Hong Kong dollars from taxpayers' money, and the dog was never in danger. 
And now I have to go, obviously lost a lot of time and money and whatever, but I have to go to the SPCA to the rescue her. Work. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, she, she didn't have to go through all of this. And my, my question, I guess, is like, w- while I understand the value of like someone, if someone sees that an animal is in danger, we have to move quickly. But like, there is, it seems like there is no verification whatsoever. Like, it could be just a troll. You know what I mean? Also, my dog has a, except for the microchip, of course, she also has a color with my phone number on it. No one called me. Yeah, well, that, that's a shame. You know, there was a bit of an overreaction, obviously. Oh, massive there. overreaction. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy. Did you hear of similar stories before? Look, no, there, but you ha- have to understand there are so many bad dog cases out there mm. and it's so good that the community and the people of Hong Kong mm. are now starting to, to be aware that even if you don't have a dog or you don't want to do anything, you can at least always be aware if there's a dog, you know, in a bad situation. But yeah. yes, that sounds an exaggeration. <laughs> you know I mean, people contact me, yeah. m- you know, contact stray friends, mm. uh, reporting cases. Yeah. You know, that's how our rescue work comes in. And right. I try to respond as quickly as I can. So do you also call the SPCA? Or? No, no. We are, this is a funny thing to say, but we are doing the same kind of work as SPCA, mm. but only... Um, Sometimes I can get things done right, yeah. because I don't have so many loopholes to Right, or red tape or... Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, you know, like if I see something bad, mm. I shouldn't say this, but I will walk onto the piece of people's property or I'll... Right, right. Yeah. Or I'll do... You do something. Yeah, yes. you'll get yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where SPCA always have to be... Go through Correct. the proper, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I protocol. should be, I suppose, but you know, I'm I'm getting called out to do something for a dog, and <laughs> as I say, I I'm not going to, to waste time. If I've got to help a dog, I can yeah. help a dog. And uh, here's another question for you: What do you have against cats? <laughs> I don't have time for goddamn cats. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know what? I you you can't believe it. Although I don't have time for cats, I've yeah. just rehomed two cats recently. Did you? <laughs> um, we also have cats now started on the I mean, I'm not a big fan, by the way. So if you're like, screw cats, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 365 Day Meals on Wheels now has cats waiting every day. One started, told its friends. They've told its friends. Uh, and, that's and why now, you don't help cats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so now we're having to try and dissect them and catch them. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I'm not making this an announcement. No, we are not <laughs> moving into cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're keeping the friendship within the same bond of yeah. circle. Right? I mean, I guess also because the cats, like my friends who have cats, I always try to play with them. They're just dicks. <laughs> <laughs> They're very unfriendly. All right, and on that note, let's <laughs> <laughs> Keep it positive. <laughs> no, no I get it. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. trust talk cats. Well, I put it this because way. I mean, you're not listening to this podcast. So <laughs> yeah, it's like, but it's like, the, the, I think because the feedback that you get from dogs is so immediate and so overwhelmingly positive that you were like, I want to do more for you. But the cat, like, the cat does everything on its terms. And I'm like, you know what? I don't like you either. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, bring back to the last thing I, I want to touch upon is that the, the stressful side of it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, real you, quick on that one. Yeah. I can tell you the stress has been absolutely unbelievable. And I keep so many times I feel like I've, I've got to run away. Yeah. I've got to go. I mean, I don't sleep well when something's on my mind. You know, and my family know when something's troubling me. I yeah. just they would just know, yeah, yeah. I go introvert because I'm so thinking how I can solve the problem, and you know, money was was the the hardship because I always think what happens to the dogs if if I can't keep the shelter. You know, that's always been up until recently the, the big thing until South China Morning Post support, mm. um, and it's always. Worry, worry and stress. You know, there's always people having... It's people problems. And I'm, I have to say it's never the dogs. The mm. dogs are the most wonderful thing that's ever happened, but the people make the problems. Mm. And, and it's an emotional world to work in. And honestly, not a lot of people are cut out for this kind of work. Yeah. And because of the emotion, people have different views and they can really get quite destructive... And I've had, over these 15 years, so many falling outs with people. And mm. that is the biggest stress of it's the It's over the dogs most Dog of the time. Dog issues. Yeah. 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 yeah, I can imagine. I mean, look, uh, for anybody who's listening out, 
many ways you can help. Number one, be nice to Nero whenever you see her. <laughs> I don't get yeah. stressed to that. Number two, go to cyclingstraightfriends.com. Uh, cycling There's a donate button. Go over there. Many, many ways to donate. I think you should add one more section on top of the full doc sponsorship is the uh, help uh, Nero de-stress for $18,000 a month. Yes, <laughs> That would definitely and help. And it's another one People can buy you, you like massage packages or something. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't get time. Yeah. The, um, the other package that we do have, we call it Mouths to Feed. Yeah. Mm. It cost three hundred dollars a month, mm. and we can feed one dog a healthy meal a day. You know, our chicken and our dry food. Yeah. And when we get donated celery and broccoli, that goes in as well. So it's called Mouths to Feed. Three hundred dollars a month. I'm sure there's that many people. Even though we have. That's the price a, of two drinks on the weekend. That's by what the I'm way. saying. Yeah. And although we have problems, everyone now. Of with, course. With sure. Yeah, yeah. In and out of work. But $300 a month to someone is not a big deal. But that will ensure one dog in the shelter or one dog on the street, that meal. And so those $300 little amounts really do help when they all add up. So Meals on Wheels, $300, $2,500 to sponsor a shelter dog or somebody please help sponsor a staff person, 20000 is wonderful. And I know people w- don't want to get involved with staff because mm. they don't want MPF, they sure. don't want any, any holiday pays. We don't want anyone to get involved. Just make a set donation mm. of 20000 a month and, you know, you'll get a tax deduction and we'll get what we need, a staff person. Or if you have four friends, everyone pitch in 5000 bam. That would be perfect, but... <laughs> I need the commitment. For yeah. me to hire somebody, yeah. I need the commitment so that I can put somebody back on, on a contract. All right. Well, cyclingstraightfriends.com, that's where you want to go. And go to the Facebook page, look at those photos, and I guarantee you'll have a lovely day ahead. Well, the Facebook is always current, mm. and I'll be quite honest, sometimes the website is not current. Right. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah, yeah. again, because but you Facebook have so is, many, yeah. is our life. Yeah. yeah. Facebook is day-to-day life of mm. Cycling Stray Friends, and um, it's just a powerful tool and and that's how things have improved for us because 15 years ago uh, I wasn't social media savvy like a lot mm. of people but yeah. you know if these people are, are so rich who started Facebook mm. all I can say they deserve it because they've brought a lot of success to a lot of people you know right. with their yeah. social yeah, media yeah. introduction yeah. Uh, thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing for our stray friends it's really wonderful to see people in Hong Kong, there's a lot of success stories, but yours is, is you chose the hard path, basically, and you chose something, you chose to give up something that... No, I didn't choose. We never well, finished the story. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Actually, keep going because you now... Yeah, those yeah. ladies were the ones that asked me to do it. So mm. I had no intentions to give up my yes. life. But once I did, it was the way that took me. So obviously, I think there was a power to be that I was put into this position to take over this role. And so it is a choice. It's a choice to keep going. Oh, well, I didn't because once you start, mm. you're trapped and you can't get out. Huh. Okay. Who is that what you call over? foster fail? Yes. Who wants to take over a shelter with 150 dogs and yeah. the worry and the stress? Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you don't have a lot of people backing up for the job. <laughs> well, how, how about uh, this? This is a difficult question. If you go back in time knowing everything that you were going to go through, would you do it or not? Would you do oh, it all over again or not? that's a hard question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Would I be in Stanley now? Would I be in Sai Kung now? I think mm. you should thank that driver who gave you that mm. crazy drive all the way to Sai Kung. You're like, let me drive. Mm. Had he driven well, probably you wouldn't be so excited to move. You'd be like, eh, this is, uh, you know, Well, no fun. life is what it is. Yeah. Mm. And that's where I am today. And I've well, got a lot of love. I can tell you there's a lot of love in that shelter. And yeah. I can tell you I don't go home smelling of perfume every night. <laughs> <laughs> well, a different type of perfume. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Anyway, well, thank you so much for that. It was always good to hear stories about this. And CyclingStraightFriends.com is where people want to go if they want the non-updated stuff with the donate button. Or you want to see the latest things, go to Cycling Straight Friends Foundation on Facebook and check it out. And thank you for having me. And I hope a lot of people enjoyed our chatter here today. And I hope something really positive comes out of it. So thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs>